Hey, welcome to part two of the swim bait design tutorial series, apparently, because it's going pretty long, so might as well cut it up into different parts. In today's episode, we're going to use Mesh Mixer to convert it to a format that we can then use in um, a different sculpting program than Mesh Mixer itself. And that's going to be the episode today, so if that's something you're into, be sure to stick around. So what we're going to do then is take the STL file from Fusion 360. If we try to modify this directly, it's going to not be a solid object. So there's ways to convert it in uh, Fusion 360 to a solid object. But honestly, um, it's just easier to use this program. This is called Autodesk Mesh Mixer. So what we're going to do is we're going to import that into Mesh Mixer. And it shows up kind of like this weird, goofy complex STL from Fusion 360. But we're just going to edit, and I'm pretty sure in here it is Make Solid. So we hit the Make Solid in ed under Edit in Mesh Mixer. We're going to set this up to whatever our computer can handle. Um, I'm just going to try and... Oh, I don't even know. We'll probably go, go like a cell size, a point... We'll just do like a, like a point two or something, because let's you know let's be real. If we're if we are three um, D modeling this for three D printing, especially FDM three D printing, we're only going to need that like point two millimeter layer height. Maybe go down to point one or something like that. But honestly, I don't really care. Um, it's going to be fine. Plus, we're going to edit this STL further. So I'm going to go to accurate for the solid type. Um, and then we're just going to let her rip. And it freaks out. There we go. Now it's back in. There's a few artifacts there after uh, it tried it, like on the side here. You can see it's trying to interpolate that, uh, that geometry. But for the most part, I like it. I'm okay with that. So I'm going to say accept. So now it comes out with this right here where we have an actual this is not solid uh, so it's our object browsers the object browser shows up and you can see that there's a, so, a non-solid surface that came off of Fusion 360 and then there is a rough blank solid that came after we made solid through Mesh Mixer so you can turn those on and off you can choose to delete those I'm just going to delete it so it doesn't get uh, in my way I don't have to deal with it. So now I know all I am dealing with here is this specific model that is solid. So now, once we're in Mesh Mixer, the whole reason we did this is because we, we wanted something other than an STL file. So now Mesh Mixer allows us to do so much more with it than we were just being able to export the STL from Fusion 360. So now we can export this in any number of formats that we want out of Mesh Mixer to use it in a separate program. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably go into this folder and I'll just make just make a new one that let's do this YouTube. Let's make this the YouTube swim bait. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See what I did there? See? All right, then I'm going to do an OBJ. Um, you can pick any of these. 3MF is a very, very well-rounded format. Not a lot of things utilize it, um, especially for 3D printing. STL is the standard, but uh, the 3MF file format is very robust. The problem is, is that uh, a lot of slicers don't recognize it, except for some certain slicers like uh, Simplify 3D and stuff. And some of the newer updates of these uh, free-to-use softwares, they're getting more and more up into that trying to break away from the STL file format. Um, there's nothing inherently wrong with STL and 3D printing. It's just you want uh, a little bit more complex file format, you can use the 3MF or something like that. What we're going to do is we're going to use the OBJ format object file. And it's not the best format ever, but 
you know, I'm okay with it. The reason we're going to do that is because the program we're going to put into requires an OBJ format. So we need to make it that. So we're going to do uh, YouTube swim bait. It doesn't accept STLs. So it's going to calculate vertices and faces. It's going to export an OBJ. Now, now, now we get to the fun part. We're going to go into Sculptress, which is an, I use this program. Uh, it's a, it's a free program. You can get it, uh, from Pixelogic. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, but I use this a lot for or, more organic models. I just, I find that the interpolations that Sculptress does as you're sculpting are way above what Mesh Mixer does. I just find it to be way more intuitive as well. The brushes you use in Sculptress and everything for more of an artistic standpoint, just a very, very good program, right? So what we're going to do here is we are going to import that OBJ we just made with Mesh Mixer. So now we can import the OBJ because you can see here what Sculptress allows you to bring in is just OBJ files and that's it. And you can do ZBrush files. So Sculptress is also kind of uh, collective with ZBrush. ZBrush is also a good program, but just Sculptress so simple, so easy to use. So we're going to go to YouTube swim bait and we're just going to do a new scene. And there we go. Now we have our blank that we made in Fusion 360 pop into Sculptress. So now Sculptress is an interesting environment. You right click to move around. You use your mouse scroll button to uh, change orientation and you hold down your shift button to and shift button as well as the scroll button to move the object in space. But what we can do is we can add symmetry. It'll say that it'll make it symmetric. So if it wasn't symmetric before it will, it'll, it'll bring down the sides. So now we have this faint line down the middle and this means anything we do to this side. So for instance, right now I have a draw, so it'll add. So anything we do on this side will happen to the other side. Right, so you can do this in Mesh Mixer. It's not exactly, I don't quite like it as much. I mean, you can make some really cool stuff in Mesh Mixer, but for me, like the, the Mesh Network Sculptress has, because it's more orientated to artists, seems to be a lot better. Like, look how many, you know, like look how detailed this can become with this mesh network. Now, the only issue is with Sculptress, you're going to want a decently fast PC. Because if you look at the, the amount of triangles that this comprises this mesh, right? Each one of these is an individual triangle, three points in space. I mean, when you're starting to move this around, that's quite a bit of computing power. You can get away with it with smaller, like if you're doing smaller, less complex um, models, you can get away with it, but just keep that in mind. It's a little intensive. So Sculptress is just a brush set sculpting program uh, on, the, on the computer, essentially. So I'm gonna undo a bunch of this, hopefully. It probably lost its undo limit, but that's fine. So each brush allows you to influence this clay as you would in real life. The only thing it doesn't really have is a cut function where you would take a knife and cut out clay. So as you're working through this, you kind of want to think about that a little bit um, as well. But what we're going to do, this is a flattened brush. You can change the size of the brush, so the area that it influences. You can change that up here. And then the strength of what it influences, right? So that's all the way high strength. And then this is a little bit lower, right? You can see how it doesn't uh, influence it as greatly. 
So you just play around with that and you get accustomed to what each brush is going to do and how it's going to do it. And then you just kind of just try and go through and make whatever you're thinking in your head enter the 3D space of the computer. And I think that's the, the hardest challenge with most anything you do in the computer is coming up with a way to how do I get this out of my head and into the computer so then I can introduce it to the real world again by 3D printing. So I don't know. It's just uh, it's an interesting dynamic that we have in the world today. You can do manufacture without having to manufacture. So I'm just going to add, subtract, add, subtract. Um, we're at about 10 minutes in the video here. So what I think I'm going to do is just keep going with this. I'm going to do a quick time lapse. to export it so now we export it as an obj we can do swim bait um like final something like that or um after sculpt there we go obj there you go hopefully you found this uh video helpful maybe enjoyable if you did give a like maybe even subscribe and uh yeah that's in a nutshell how to make an easy to modify and sculpt blank in fusion 360 take it in the mesh mixer convert it to a file format that sculptress uses um, and also make it solid so when you do incorporate it into sculptress it works a lot uh, easier and when you edit the outer skin it doesn't uh, break into the model because it's hollow so we made it solid in the mesh mixer and then finally um, using Sculptress to make it our own, make it how we want it to be, and then uh, put it into a slicer similar to Simplify 3D or uh, whatever slicer you prefer to use. So, hopefully you got something from this. Yeah, that's about all I got. I'll see you on the next one. Keep your amps up and your filament dry. <laughs>